Hello, my wonderful spirit guides. I am back from my break and I am very much looking forward to getting into this. I have missed you all so much, it's unreal, I can't even explain it. It's been a weird couple weeks because I went to a festival and it was like incredible and I had the best time ever, the best people ever, like best experiences, really just like, when you go to like a festival, you go away with lots of people, you find out new things about yourself and, you know, I just feel really good about myself and about who I am and so on. So, you know, I came out of it feeling good about myself and that's a really nice thing to uh, recognize and so on. However, as soon as I come home, I come home to find out that my cat is missing. And from the reports from my neighbours, I think they, you know, my cat went missing either on the day we got back or the day before. Um, so it hasn't been too long yet. I, with all the cat, like, kind of rescue people I've been talking to, they say, like, two weeks. They, they can sometimes take two weeks to come home and so on. And it's not been that. It's been about seven days, like a week. So, yeah, we'll just see what happens. But yeah, I'm definitely heartbroken. The first few days, well, I say first few days, but the first like four or five days were really, really, really hard. But on the fifth day, I kind of um, had like a peak of feeling terrible. And I rang up like lots of cat rescue people after we'd already done loads of stuff anyway. But um, they were, they kind of re calmed me down by saying like, you know, sometimes it could be two weeks or whatever. And they told me what to do, little things like emptying my Hoover contents outside, just little things. And, you know, I've been a little bit more calm and hopeful. And I'm glad because I knew I had to get back to work. So, yeah, um, still not feeling the greatest, but I think a bit of music will cheer me up. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Anyway, I'm going to be reacting to three songs by Cruel Youth. One of the songs I have actually heard on stream, on a live stream, but I heard it one time during a live stream. I loved it, but I want to be able to hear it again and actually like, I don't know, listen independently because when I'm on stream, I'm listening with everyone. I'm talking a little bit, enjoying it, but chatting. I want to be able to hear it again with the details and so on and feel it. Um, but it's only one out of three that I have heard and only once. So, yes. And those songs are going to be Devil in Paradise, um, which is the one I heard. Then Portrait of a Female. And then the latest song, Mr. Badman. And I'm really, really, really looking forward to it. I know that Natalia Kills has quite a lot of... Um, Teddy uh, Sinclair. She has a lot of... Uh, controversy around her and so on. I don't really give a crap about all that. I love Natalia Kills' music, like, and very soon, actually very soon after this video, I'm going to be reacting to Perfectionist, the album. So yeah, I look forward to it. Right, well anyway, let's do it. Devil in Paradise. I'm actually so excited to hear this again, because it feels like ages since I heard it. Even though it isn't. I think it was only like a few weeks ago, but I only heard it once because I was totally busy after that. So yeah, let's go. Oh, I love the great. I love her voice here. Let's just say like, I'll never go back to California. It's got that major twang to it. Yeah, never go back. And it's super grungy, but it also has like, well, I love the a -dum -dum -k 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 -k. I love the way that sounds. Yeah, very grungy, um, but it also has like an open feeling to it. It does feel like open space, like very like, um, breezy almost and you know it reminds me like in the picture i'm pretty sure yeah that statue in the picture 
you know, I can kind of see that and I can see like rushing like cars and people and like liveliness of a city all around it with the sound. Um, it's interesting, but oh, yeah, it's so good. I trip their lap and when the stars don't shine, wow. I die. Then live for them dollar bills. Lyrics. They say, I saw the devil in paradise. Oh, so good. The distortion. That's also cool because she's like, she's all like, da na na da na. But then here it's like, um, I saw the devil with a smiling face. It's got like the higher, so not just a twang aspect of, ah, uh, <laughs> yeah, but also like the, yeah, making it nasally as well. It's just like full twang, full nasal. It's got attitude basically and a quirk to it. Oh, I forgot about this bit. Oh, I'm glad I'm listening again because I forgot. Sipping French wine oh. with the devil. Pretty oh. things slipping my rise at the devil. Horror hop, hip hop feeling. Clever guys lying and I'm buying, saying special. Jeddy sent the check for time me over with the vessel. Running from the reaper when you thought you was a rapper. How they gonna tell you why you sleeping in the rental? No one gonna know you better show them your potential. See, cha cha, you better show them your pussy, bitch, before you get your ass blacklisted. I love that moment. Fuck. I fucking love that sound. It reminds me of New York. I've never been to New York. It just reminds me of it. Oh, how's it going? Hey, what's up? I just want to say you're you're a really wonderful. Singer. Oh my god, thank you so much. You know, I, I actually used to be a, a really big fan. Ah, that's interesting. I actually used to be a really big fan. <laughs> interesting, I like that. But fuck me, that song. When it goes into that hip hop -y moment, I can't with it, I can't. It gives me a feeling of like some kind of Method Man feeling to it. Wu-Tang Clan energy, but it's like, because it's got that dark 90s hip hop feeling. It actually reminds, and she's saying something about the devil and it reminds me of that song. I can't remember who does it. Is it Dance with the Devil? Immortal Technique, Dance with the Devil. That song like used to like really freak me out when I was a kid, uh, but in like, a way where I was like, oh my god, this is so dark, it's so cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it had like a really weird storyline to it, right? And of course, this Immortal Technique song reminds me of New York a lot as well. That the world ever seen, he used to fuck movie stars and sniff coke in his dream, a corrupting young mind at the age of 13. Yeah, so it reminded me of that Dance of the Devil by Immortal Technique. I know it's different, it's literally Teddy Sinclair, she's like a pop rock kind of chick. And her, you know, her sound there was very grungy, but still like mainstream in that way. And Immortal Technique are, you know, very hip hop and so on like that. But, uh, it had that like boom, that dark, dusky, dusky kind of feeling, that 90s mmm to it. And they're both talking about the devil. Um, obviously in the Dance of the Devil song, it's a very interesting ending to it. Um, I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was something to do like murdering the mum or something, not just murdering, but something else. <laughs> I'm not gonna go into it. You should just check it out. But um, yeah, dark song. I don't know why, but that bit just kept, just reminded me of a mortal technique every time I hear it, but with a bit more sass, a bit more attitude, a bit lighter in content, of course. Um, but I do love that feeling. You can't get enough of it. I couldn't pause because I'm just like, mm. oh, this bit. I don't actually, do you know what? I need to hear it again for a second, just for a second. I'll rise at the devil, closer by Hollywood, sign with the devil. Getting that money, I'm telling you. I'm saying, you with the devil, Okay, anyway, uh, I am actually addicted to that moment and I love all the bit before for that to happen. You know, all the bit before has to be there and it sounds amazing all the bit before, but it is like a completely different song. And then when this bit comes in, it works, but it feels different, you know? it's It, it works, but it shifts you into something darker. And it makes sense because she's talking about California, I think, and how it's like, and Hollywood, the darkness of it. Something that we've had many artists 
sing about over time. But anyway, I'm going to spend about a million years on this one song, so I'm going to move on. Next song I'm going to do is Portrait of a Female. I'm interested. I wish I don't need you. Okay. So it's got that kind of 1950s feeling to it. Um, what are they called again? The 1950s kind of pop? Like what? what's the uh, what's the genre called? 1950s doo-wop maybe? Bit of doo-wop, you know, and it feels like, it reminds you of Grease a lot. Um, it's got that feeling to it though. Very different from the other song, but I wonder if it'll break into something different here as well. We'll find out. My hands are Devil again. And I'm so miserable. Miserable. hands Basically, this is some kind of S and M uh, B, B what but BDSM S -N some you know one of those kind of songs. It's all about being like you know it's like a sexual thing of being dominated and so on like that, and it's kind of cheeky and it's in this nineteen fifties style that's very romantic. Um, which kind of gives it a little bit of like comedy to it, but also, yeah, it does. It gives it comedy. It's not on the nose, but the lyrics are very on the nose. Um, you know, like my hands are tied, my hands are tied, literally, literally, faithfully to the bedpost. Like they're, they're literally tied, literally they are. And I find that funny because it's not just my hands are tied as in, you know, oh, I don't know how to, I can't make a decision. It's really hard. Like I'm stuck, I'm trapped. It's actually, no, literally my hands are tied. <laughs> I find that really funny. Um, and just the way she sings it as well. I don't know. I just, I think it's really like interesting. And I didn't catch it straight away until I started reading down, you know, the second verse as she started singing it. I was like, oh, I see what's going on here. I like that. My hands are tied. Literally, 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 to the Like a portrait of a female. Interesting. It's so I love that it's like a kind of like a tie between like talking about you know the S and M sort of BDSM sort of thing, but also talking about a relationship. You bring out the worst in me. You know, it's better if we don't talk. Let's just kind of communicate through you know, intimacy in, in the way that we do it, in, in that kind of submissive, dom you know, dominant like thing that we do. Um, that's our way of communicating, let's forget the rest. But there's a little bit of resentment in there, almost like anger. Um, and that's the way they clear the anger, kind of. But I don't know, it seems a little bit dangerous too, a little bit toxic. Um, because she's saying, all I want is to bring out the worst in you as well. Like, um, and that's interesting because, you know, she's saying all you do is bring out the worst in me and that feels like a horrible feeling, like it's not a good feeling and all she wants to do is bring out the worst in them. But that in some way is a good feeling because the worst in them is them being dominant in the bedroom. And so the worst 
in them is actually like something that she's really attracted to um, in an intimate setting. <sighs> I hope that makes sense. The song I didn't like as much as the other one, just like uh, feeling wise, style wise, but I really did like the content. Like I like the lyrics. I like the like the way it's thought provoking and interesting. So I like that it was a song that had a smoother feel to it, so you can catch the story to it in that way. Um, like I very much was focused on the lyrics, but and as far as I like that fifties kind of doo wop sound, it was very distorted. That like it all kind of crumbles into one sometimes. And with my synesthesia thing, sometimes it can look a bit weird. But um, it, yeah, I still liked it though. I didn't dislike it. I actually really did like it. It just wasn't as good as the other one. But anyway, we are now going to go to Mr. Badman, which literally came out not even that long ago, I don't think. Because one of my patrons, who loves Natalia Kills, loves Teddy, um, told me about it, basically. And they said that they loved it and they think that I'm going to love it. So I guess we'll find out. <laughs> Interesting vocal. Hey, Mr. Batman, give me that crown. Very Santa Gold. Oh, it's like M.I.A. Santa Gold. I love it. It's like grungy, but with so much space. I think that kind of reminds me of like um, Jane's Addiction in a way. It had that like rocky like sound to it, but it's got space in there. How do I even describe that? Because when you think of grunge, like say like Nirvana, it never feels spacious. It, it usually feels intimate and like you're in this kind of hole with them. But this feels like a grungy feeling. And also it's got that very, hey, Mr. Birdman. It got like a bit of a reggae old Jamaican feel to it too, I I'd say. I don't know, it's a nice blend though. Um, anyway, so Jane's Addiction are classed as alternative indie. I'd say they're quite psychedelic as well. Um, let me put on a song so, I, you know, I've seen them before, but I've, yeah. Just when I get it right. They do a song that's like, Jane says. That's all I know. <laughs> yeah, in a way, like with Jane's Addiction, it's like they have the guitar sounds, but it's very light. Like the Jane's Addiction, uh, but the Jane Says song uh, uh, in particular, it has a lightness to it, but it still has like kind of grungy, well, yeah, alternative indie is what it is, but like uh, it has, a, I don't know, I don't know why, but it has a spaciousness that I rem like remember very well when I first heard the song Jane Says. It's interesting that I feel it in a lot of Cruel Youth as well. Yeah, but, the, but Cruel Youth has definitely got more of a depth to it, I'd say. Hey, Mr. Batman, give me that crown. It's a reverb. When I drop a vibe, you buzzing. Got you feeling just like you coming. I'm selling the shit, you crushing. You don't want to get my cards. You come and show me how you've been down. Hmm. I want it, oh baby, you like that. Psycho girl, got you gunning if I'm gonna do that. That double vocal? Or maybe it's a very short slap back on a reverb delay. Oh, and now you wanna hang Mr. Batman, give me that crown. Mmm. Heavy coming in the back with it. Got the cuties in the coop and we do not slip. Talk without a reason. Hey, Mr. <laughs> Batman, give me that crown. And we be sitting in the two seat. Got the lights and you run it. Oh, baby, you like that. Psycho girl, got you gunning. All the please fall. Traveling from ear to ear. Wow, interesting. Definitely gave me a whole lot of Santa Gold, a whole lot of MIA. Um, big time. What I mean, come on. So she's got a British father of Afro Jamaican heritage and a Uruguayan mother. That's amazing. Yeah, because I was wondering, like, oh, she's really um, putting herself into this kind of Jamaican sound. 
And I was wondering, has she got Jamaican? She, you know, she did look like she has some Jamaican heritage and so on. But I was like, does she though? So I wanted to look it up and she does. So it makes complete sense. Um, it's kind of nice. It's almost like paying homage to her father in a way, but didn't her father go to prison and everything? That's interesting too. Or maybe not to her father, but just to her roots and so on. So that's really cool. I really like that sound for her. Like, I, again, the Devil in Paradise still might be my favourite one, but the Mr. Badman one is really interesting because it feels like she's really, she's really honing her, like, new sound. She's really trying to find it and work with it and she's not afraid to try different things like eat three all three of those songs were similar yet very different because the first one the devil in paradise had that real grungy and then hip-hop feeling and then portrait of a female had that 1950s feeling but still had the grungy aspect with the distortion and then mr badman also still had a distortion but had that like very jamaican uh feeling to it which was very cool as well fuck it's pretty awesome and hopefully but yeah um i found that really interesting because I, I definitely heard like i said the santa gold mia sort of thing but like i said with jane's addiction i know it's a bit more of a unique comparison but hopefully you'll understand where i'm coming from i'm it's mainly to do with the width of the music the like the lightness in areas and like the kind of dirtiness and the grunginess of the instruments, but then the vocals having like a big like reverb delay on it that makes it sound bright and wide and so on. I love that um, combination. It's actually so good. Um, and I can't wait to hear more from her, honestly. Um, obviously I'm gonna be going back and listening to Natalia Kills again with the album Perfectionist. So that's gonna be a different vibe again, but uh, I'm looking forward to that too. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm really, really digging her music. Literally, whatever she's doing, I'm kind of liking. <laughs> so that's a good sign. But um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and I shall see you next time. Bye.